all say welcome to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. My name is Jerry Shockey and I oversee all the youth and educational programs here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. We're excited to offer this program, Heart of Hall of Famer, featuring Pro Football Hall of Famer, Mr. Paul Warfield. And we will remind the schools that are tuned in on video conference too to make sure to keep your microphones muted as well. My children come quietly. If you start filling up this row, then this row. Okay, I, 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 I located the person that was. So, uh, Driftwood, I have your microphones muted right now uh, because you got your microphones open and uh, it's kind of interrupting the program a little bit. But we'll get back to you here in just a second. Uh, so, with that being said, again, the real idea and premise behind this program is to convey what it took to get in the Hall of Fame beyond just the athletic ability. As we shared with this group earlier, we, we understand that, uh, you know, our... Hall of Famers are great examples of athleticism and talent and skill and all those and ability and all those sorts of things. Uh, but it took more than that to get in the Hall of Fame. It took the it took character qualities. It took those six pillars that you guys are studying, the trustworthiness and the respect and the responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. It took those things for uh, these guys to, to, to get in the Hall of Fame. And, uh, you know, it's, I don't think it's a secret uh, to anyone, but those aren't character qualities just to be in a – a Hall of Fame player, their character qualities to be in a Hall of Famer in everyday life, so to speak. So, uh, we give you the opportunity today through this series to interact with one of the greatest football players that's ever played in Pro Football Hall of Famer, Mr. Paul Warfield, and give you an idea of how elite of a class this is. Um, there have been 20, over 20,000 players that have played in the National Football League since 1920. There are only 280 members of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and only 240 of those uh, or so of those are actual players. The other ones are contributors and coaches. Uh, so it gives you an idea of just how of elite of, a, of, a, of an athlete Mr. Warfield was during his, his playing days in the National Football League. So uh, with that being said, before we get started with Mr. Warfield's opening remarks, we do have to, again, thank a team of folks. It took over a football team to, uh, uh, to make this connection possible, and we greatly appreciate all the efforts of all the folks, and we'd like to recognize those, those folks. First of all, as the schools are seeing, Mr. Warfield's uh, sitting at a table that says Cathedral City High School. We have to thank the uh, uh, administration and teachers at Palm Springs Unified and Cathedral City High School for making this possible. Uh, Joan Boyko, Christine Anderson, Ryan Wool, Guillermo Chavez, and uh, Todd Deliberto. Uh, thank you for all your efforts on your end to making this connection possible out to these schools across the country as well as getting your students, students involved. And most importantly, being willing to host one of our Hall of Famers in your in your uh, auditorium there, so we greatly appreciate that. I have to thank our good friends at Interesis Networks, uh, Rick Edson and Eric Rowe and Jerry Herzog, all the folks that helped make this connection possible uh, as well. We thank you for reaching out to Cathedral High School and, and finding a host site for us there out in California. And last but definitely not least, we have to thank ETEC Ohio uh, through our State Department of Education because they are the ones that allow this connection to be possible. Uh, and all of our Heart of Hall of Famer programs possible because they're the ones that can connect all these schools together and, and, and connect us all together so we can have this interaction. interaction. So thank you to uh, ETEC Ohio for that. Uh, thanks to the teachers at all the schools that uh, help make this possible. I know it takes a lot of sacrifice and preparation of your students to make this possible, so thank you to all you folks for that. And last but definitely not least, we would like to recognize the students that are participating. So in a moment, uh, I'm going to ask the students at Cathedral City High School and then the students across the country to uh, go ahead and feel free to give a school shout-out and uh, uh, show a little school spirit. So we're going to start with Cathedral City High School. If you want to give a shout-out, go ahead. Oh. Is... Cathedral? Mr. Warfield, do you have the microphone muted? That's a quiet bunch of hundred students that are sitting in there right now. I was going to say, thank you very much, uh, Cathedral. Let's go to, the next school we're going to go to is uh, Driftwood Middle School. Okay, when I ask you a question, you guys know my name. Sure. Driftwood. No, I already gave out the Driftwood. question. Driftwood Middle School. Okay. All right, Driftwood, we're going to mute you guys for a minute. For some reason, you're not picking up the audio here. And your microphone is open, so I'm going to mute you from our bridge. And let's go to uh, Samso Elementary. Hi. 
Okay, and that those students are in Parlin, New Jersey from Samson uh, Elementary. And we're going to try and work through when Mr. Uh, Warfield has his opening remarks. I'll try to give Driftwood a call in Florida and see what's going on with them there. But uh, um, uh, with that being said, um, let me give a quick introduction of Mr. Warfield. And first of all, he was drafted by both the Browns and the uh, Bills during in the 1964 season. Uh, for those of you that don't know, there were two leagues at that time, the AFL and the NFL, that rivaled against each other. It's what we know today as the AFC and NFC, but they rivaled each, against each other. And in many cases, when you were a good football player that was drafted, you would have been drafted by both leagues as well. He was a Cleveland fixture before the 1970 trade to the Miami Dolphins, which happened to be a good thing because a few years later they went on to the greatest uh, season, undefeated season in NFL history. Uh, he's a key element in the Dolphins' offenses. Uh, mere presence on the field forced defenses to adjustment to adjust to him. Fast, super smooth, precise, pattern runner, sure-handed, and an excellent blocker. Now, throughout his career, he caught 427 passes for 8,565 yards and 85 touchdowns. Had a sensational, now get this, a sensational 20.1 yards per catch during his career. He was all NFL six years and named eight Pro Bowls. Uh, because of those honors and because of the, his athletic prowess, uh, he was um, inducted in a number of different Hall of Fames. He's a member of the Warren Sports Hall of Fame, which is his uh, high school alma mater in Warren, Ohio. The Cleveland Browns Ring of Honor in Cleveland, Ohio, obviously, the Browns. Uh, the Miami Dolphins Hall of Fame and the Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio, uh, their Hall of Fame as well. So, uh, and obviously, the biggest honor that an individual player can receive uh, in 1983, he was enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame here in Canton, Ohio. Uh, he's pursued off the field, he's pursued a number of business interests, which I'm sure he can share a little bit about, which has included working in sports administra administration most recently. Uh, I believe just retired from the Cleveland Browns as a special advisor to the general manager there with the Cleveland Browns. So uh, with that being said, uh, we will turn things over to Mr. Warfield for his opening remarks and just ask you to... Unmute the microphone. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Saki. Uh, students here at Cathedral City High School and uh, certainly around the country, it is a pleasure for me to uh, be with you uh, this morning. Um, I uh, can reflect back to many, many, and maybe I better add another, many years ago uh, when I was a student like many of you who uh, sat through a, a number of uh, uh, lectures by individuals coming into school to uh, partake in the experience of exchange of ideas. And th those lectures that uh, I, I attended as a, a young student uh, back in my days at uh, Warren G. Harding High School in Ohio, uh, I found to be very memorable and very important uh, to me. Uh, I think the one thing that, uh, you know, I say that stood out as far as part of my being is concerned was uh, uh, I was willing to be open and receptive and listen to a lot of things and uh, I think that turned out to be very helpful for me so hopefully this experience today for you uh, will be one that will be uh, helpful to you and um, my exposure and my experience is in life have been sort of intimately tied in with uh, the field of athletics, and uh, it was something that even before I reached certainly high school, as where many of you are and some of the uh, others uh, out there listening uh, to this program today are in middle school and uh, elementary schools, but it encompasses the whole experience of education from elementary to secondary levels in our school systems. But uh, it's it's something that I experienced that I thought was relevant, was good for me, and positive for me. And, and a part of this discussion during the next hour, we're going to talk about uh, certainly uh, the six pillars of character and how much does character play a role in helping to shape individuals, uh, hopefully to become positive, contributing uh, members of our society. And, and uh, I believe that uh, there is a direct connection. I believe that whatever successes that I have had have come largely because of my foundation 
that many of you experience that starts first of all in your homes with your parents and the school system plays a very vital important role because then you come in contact with your teachers and instructors and the things that they stress along the same lines where the initial foundation started. When we talk about values, when we talk about values be they ethical or moral, the foundation starts somewhere, the supporting systems go right along the line. We believe in this society of ours that based on what we have accomplished for hundreds of years and as a part of being a part of this great nation of ours is because that we believe in certain moral and ethical values that translate into a productive society and that's what we would like all of our young people to do to embrace these value systems because they have been so vital to the success that we have had in every aspect of this society. And so, you know, I got my start many, many years ago, certainly when I was a student in grammar school, later on junior high school and then high school and again these foundations, what a person of character is all about, were certainly a part of what I learned at each level and I think that helped me along during the course of my career and my pursuit of career. A person of character I believe is certainly a person who is a good person and someone that people can look up to and admire. And as I was coming along as a youngster, I identified with the great sports figures of my era and what they represented. And to give you a couple of names of the ones that I identified with, for example, the legendary Jesse Owens, whose name may be a little bit strange to many of you out here today, but for me, during that era, which goes back many, many years ago, he was from the state of Ohio. I am an Ohioan. I'm from a small town called Warren, Ohio, which is a small town in northeastern Ohio, about 50 miles southeast of Cleveland. Jesse Owens got his start in Cleveland, Ohio, later Ohio State University. And then he, of course, was highly successful on the world stage in the Olympic Games many, many, many years ago, going back to 1936. But he was called by many during that period of time one of the greatest athletes of the century. And that takes on a large and huge connotation, greatest athlete of the century during his period of time. But I identified and admired his contribution in the field of track and field, but off the field also as he was a vital member of the community of Ohio and Cleveland. But not only that, a person whose fame, but not only his fame, his good works have spread throughout the United States of America. Later on, as I started to look at other sports, I had great admiration for a person by the name of Jack Robinson, who became the first African-American who played Major League Baseball. And Jack Robinson, I admired his person in terms of someone that you could look up to. He was an educated man who got his undergraduate education here in the state of California at the University of California in Los Angeles, better known as UCLA. And I had great fondness and great admiration for UCLA. And although I was all the way back on the other side of the country, I had a special interest in UCLA primarily because of Jack Robinson being the first African-American to be allowed, and I will say that, use that word, allowed to play baseball at that time. It was a very difficult circumstance in which he had to prove himself to be worthy of playing and had to encounter great, great difficulties, but he did it majestically. He did it with honor. He did it with tolerance. All of these terms that I'm using are part of one's character that helps them get to where they need to be. And 
he bridged that gap and then paved the way for uh, another and other generations of young African Americans to play in Major League Baseball as well as the other sports. Uh, so Jack Robinson was uh, someone that I had great admiration for because of the way he conducted himself, his contribution to society. And lastly, Paul Robeson, uh, who was a combination of actor in theater, a baritonist, a great singer, and uh, a man who was of letters who attended uh, I believe it was Harvard University. And uh, he uh, uh, became an international figure, much as the immortal Jesse Owens had become. Uh, he was in leadership in terms of the African-American community nationally, but he was almost a statesman internationally as he uh, had uh, great, great relationships with foreign governments. So those are some of the people that I admire. Those are some of the people that I wanted to identify with. And I wanted to examine to find out their contributions uh, to this society, to international uh, relevance in this world, and what they did. All were athletes, but all had other contributions besides their abilities uh, to perform in the arenas or theaters uh, in, in these societies. Um, again, they were uh, persons of a good character. They did what was right. They set a good example. Uh, they made this society and the world a little bit better place to live. Uh, they were people of integrity. They were people of honesty. They were people who were reliable. Uh, people who had great sense of loyalty in terms of what they believe in, respect, tolerance, uh, courtesy, and all of these things that we talk about caring and citizenship uh, to the six pillars of uh, what great character is about. Now, my experiences, I found that while I identify with these people and desire to be very much like them, that I was experiencing the same thing in terms of my introduction to the field of athletics because I found that the programs that I was involved in, be they recreational, but in particularly scholastically, that certain responsibilities or expectations uh, I had to live up to. And I found that to be a good thing because these were the same things that were being practiced to me by my parents at my home in terms of how I was to respect other individuals and uh, how I was to relate to them and what examples I was to uh, set for once I was out of our household. So these things are all very important in terms of developing and laying the foundation for what you can be and where you want to go, be it athletics or be it whatever endeavor that may be of interest to you at this particular time. So. Let's have a little conversation about these things this morning. Uh, this is my introductory part into it, but I'll be very interested, certainly with the students here at Cathedral City and across the nation, in what they have to contribute as we go along in this discourse and dialogue about what my experiences were about and how I can share what my experiences are with you today. So, uh, Jerry, if you're ready to get started, I'm ready to go forward. We most certainly are, and uh, we do have a couple veterans to the program this this uh, session in Driftwood and uh, Samson Elementary. They've done the program before, so they're familiar with the format. Uh, we're going to rotate through one by one. We'll start with the students there in Cathedral uh, City, and then. Uh, We'll ask Mr. Warfield to repeat the question just so we can hear the question through the video conferencing system so the schools tuning in can hear that. Then we'll go in the order of Driftwood Middle School, which I just got an email. I'm corresponding back and forth with them right now. Uh, I know Yvette there is working hard and got them up and connected, so thank you, Driftwood. I know you guys are connected there in Hollywood Hills and Samso Elementary. We'll go after that. So we'll go Cathedral, Driftwood, and then Samso. Um, so... I'm, I'm going to quit talking because uh, you guys don't even care what I have to say. You want to hear from Mr. Warfield. So uh, let's get to the questions with him. So let's start with the students that are at Cathedral. Go ahead with your first question. Caitlin, 
Stand up and be nice and loud. Uh, did you play any other positions in high school besides wide receiver? Well, the question in the first question, uh, and your name is young man? Enoch. I'm sorry? Enoch. 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 Uh, first question, Jerry, that I received here from Cathedral City High School is, did I play any other position in football besides wide receiver? Is that the question? Yeah, that, that, that's the question. And uh, when I first began playing football was um, really in elementary school. Uh, and it was not tackle football at that time, it was touch football. And the interesting thing about that experience was that I was afraid to go out for football. And I was afraid that I didn't quite measure up uh, to playing football, but I wanted to do it, but still I was a little bit scared to do it. It, was the, it represented the unknown for me. I was much more comfortable playing football in my neighborhood with all the other kids. But organized football, in grammar school, even though it was touch football, that frightened me a little bit. But fortunately, I had a teacher who pushed me and pushed me until he just was not accepting the fact that I wasn't going to play football until I came out. So I did go out for football, and I found out that I could play. I found out that it obviously was fun. I enjoyed it, but I found out that I was good enough to compete, although I was afraid that I was not good enough to compete. So the first position I played was quarterback in grammar school. Then I evolved up to junior high school, and the first couple of years I was in junior high school, my mother was afraid that I would get hurt, so she wouldn't allow me to play. So I delivered newspapers. <laughs> which was a great experience and an interesting experience because I had my own job, I had my customer base, and I was able to deal with people, and it was a great learning experience for me. But finally, uh, my final year of junior high school, I was big enough, I guess, and my father and I coerced my mother into allowing me to go out to play in junior high school. But the experience, again, was it wasn't quite as good as it was in grammar school. And so I didn't know that when I evolved to go to high school that I really wanted to, uh, you know, play high school football. But in, high, in junior high school, I played a position that's no longer called halfback. It's called running back today. And then evolving to high school, ultimately, I played running back, but I also played both ways, and I played defensive football, too, so I would play what was the equivalent of a cornerback today. So in answer to your question, yes, I played other positions in high school, and I didn't play receiver in high school, uh, grammar school, nor junior high school. And thank you, uh, Cathedral, with the first question to start the program, and we're going to go to Hollywood Hills, Florida. Broward County that uh, Mr. Warfield's familiar with, it, that he had played football in the, the Miami-Dade, Broward County area. So go ahead, uh, Hollywood Hills. Thank you very much, Mr. Wilfred. We're huge fans being from the South Florida area. Thank you so much for meeting with us today. Our first question comes from Ms. Burns' class. Please stand up and speak loudly. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Lauren. Hi. Um, <laughs> Driftwood Middle is a magnet school of health and wellness. In your opinion, what is the best way for teenagers to keep fit and remain healthy? Uh, I don't think I clearly understood that about, I uh, got the last part of that about being healthy. Yvette, can you repeat that? Yes. Um, we're a school of health and wellness, and the question was, in your opinion, what do you think teenagers should do today to stay fit and healthy? Okay, I, okay, I hear that clearly. What do, what do I think that teenagers should do to remain fit and healthy? Uh, I'm a firm believer in the um, programs that are offered by communities, recreational, uh, also school systems that would encompass not only uh, what we consider to be the uh, competitive programs on the varsity level, but uh, also the uh, uh, intramural level uh, of schools and provide 
activity for young students which i think is vital and important i think that the sound fit bodies in terms of 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 activity is very important in maintaining and maintaining a health healthy lifestyle not only when people are young but during mid age and also when they get to be my area which is older age and i think that a consistent program of activity be it competitive or recreational enhances and induces good health now along with that i think i'm a firm believer in nutritional benefits for maintaining wellness and the ability to do one's job or whatever that job may be so a concerted program that initially starts in the school systems but is in the community and recreational programs and then also once one matriculates from academia into their own lives they should continue to do the same things thank you very much driftwood and we're going to go north of you guys and go to new jersey apollo new jersey samso what character qualities do you believe it takes to become a professional football player well the question is what character qualities do i believe it takes to become a professional football player and some of the things that i outlined in my opening remarks i think that certainly responsibility i think commitment i think trust in friends uh i think um all of these things integrity uh help uh and i sort of outlined very quickly before uh we got into the question and answer period about those individuals that i identified with who i think were good role models and first of all let me say that the best role models for i think all of us are our parents because they are with you on a daily basis and they can provide for most of us those attributes those values ethical and moral that will shape us in terms of making the right decisions about how we are to behave in a society today and looking at the positive and the good being helpful being courteous and being all of the things that we need to do to have success in our lives so parents but teachers also play a great and very vital role as i have indicated in the opening remarks while i wanted to be involved in our activity even at the lowest well not lowest level but at the entry level which was elementary school such as the football program i was afraid and i doubted myself which is not uncommon but fortunately i had a support system from the teachers to get involved in that program once i got involved in the program that teacher did an additional thing in terms of presenting to me what were the responsibilities the same responsibilities that i had learned from my parents in terms of how to represent our family how to relate to other people with respect and uh hopefully to receive respect in in return how to work with other people as i learned to work with my sisters although i must admit that i got a break when i was coming along because i had two older sisters and my mother i was the then so called baby of the family and the only boy of the family so i probably had it a little bit special more so than than my sisters but nevertheless there are many projects that we had to share responsibilities on in our household as we were coming up and we understood what our roles were to play you play similar roles in other aspects of their athletic teams with their businesses with their with organizations if they're a great university or a fine school system like you're involved in right now you learn that you make a contribution through your role and you try to do the very best that you can to help that organization institution or whatever be successful thank you very much uh samso and a great question there as well let's go back to the top and go back to the students there at cathedral city high school if you have a question go ahead
Well, in, in the question is, and so let's see if I can shorten it, uh, um, it involves athletics, not necessarily versus education or academics, but the thing that I learned from those who were in support of me, from not only my family to community leaders, I come from a small community, uh, comparatively speaking to where we are here today in a cathedral city that's surrounded by a number of subdivisions uh, of the Palm Springs area. Uh, but the thing that was always stressed to me, not only by my parents, but again, when I got into the school system and as a part of the athletic programs, uh, I wanted to play ultimately high school football, which was a big, big, big deal uh, in Northeast Ohio. And Ohio, like the state of California in many areas, or Texas or Pennsylvania, scholastic football is really huge, and particularly in the small industrial communities like I came from. And so there were other people who were at that level, who were youngsters, but who were older than I at the time, that I looked up to, that I admired, and that, uh, you know, I really identified what they were doing. And I said to myself, boy, I'd like to do that when I got to high school, and I'd like to be a part of the high school football program. Uh, fortunately, my experience was one in which each step of the ladder that I took along the way, there were the people in the program who indicated that, particularly in high school for the football program, this is a very proud and rich traditional program that we have here. We have high expectations of all of the young men who seek to be a part of this. And our expectations are not only high, they are demanding. You know, for example, you are not going to be the malcontents of our high school or our community. You know, your behavior is going to have to be stellar if you want to be a part of us. It was almost like the promotions that you hear about the United States Marine Corps, to a certain extent, in which they talk about pride, they talk about tradition, and they talk about what it means to be a United States Marine. Only few can be a part of that if they're willing to make those kind of sacrifices and commitments. Well, that was the same kind of pitch to a certain extent to be a part of the interscholastic football program at Warren Harding. Every Friday night in my little community, although the town was a town of about 50,000 residents, the town would close out. Almost everyone would be at the high school football stadium where there would be roughly 10 to 15,000 people. And it was a major spotlight. Most of the young male athletes wanted to be a part of that program, but to be a part of that program, again, character, citizenship, academia, all of those things counted. And if you couldn't embrace that, because our coach told us our expectations of you are going to be as great off the field as the demands for which we'll put you through on the field. So, uh, we had good football teams. We got great recognition, great support from the community, and all of the young men wanted to be a part of that. That is what I wanted to be a part of, and I knew that if I did the positive things, and if I did the right things, and if I uh, made commitments, that I could be a part of it. And if I could, uh, Mr. Warfield made a lot of great points uh, in what he just responded there with, but uh, one in particular, that really stood out to me is that he said during his little leagues that he had players at high school that he looked up to. And I think that's important, especially for those Cathedral City high school students there, but even in the middle school and stuff like that, always know that, you know, especially if you are in athletics or, or you in a position where you are to be seen by other people, that you are a role model to those people and you are looked up to. And they will want to emulate what you do, not only on the field, but off the field as well. So it is your responsibility, whether you like it or not, uh, to uh, uphold a good positive image that's going to be a good influence on those younger people as well. So let's go to Driftwood, Florida, Hollywood Hills. Thank you. Oh, 
Um, in an interview, you mentioned the team needing to be focused and unselfish and in order to break the 1973 Dolphins undefeated record. Can you share about a time in your life outside the football um, that you feel you were focused and unselfish? Um, hmm. That the period in which I played for the Miami Dolphins, uh, uh, I, it certainly encounters uh, great, great success. Uh, the greatest success that any uh, football team has enjoyed in the history of the National Football League, which goes beyond, well beyond 75 years now. Uh, we have a historical mark in which just this past fall we celebrated our 40th anniversary, which is a lot of years, uh, of being the only team in the history of the National Football League that was able to complete an entire season without a blemish on its record. Our, our final mark was 17 wins uh, with no losses. And uh, as I reflect back to not only that season, but really when I joined the Miami Dolphins, uh, I think it's a monument, if not a testament, to people coming together, working for an objective, being able to make a contribution and not necessarily care who individually was to receive the credit because everyone would receive the credit. And so now, 40 years later, each and every one of us who made that happen uh, feels extremely good about our contributions. Yes, to a certain extent, there are some of us who were acknowledged a little bit more maybe during the season or some of us who have gone on to other honors and beyond that. But it was the fact that we were trying to be the best that we could be and the only way that we could achieve that by winning games from a period of time over a period of time from 1970 through 1974 uh, by sacrifice, dedication, commitment to excellence, and the term that the young men use, selflessness. In, in, in other words, we were not worried about whether one individual was going to get more credit than the other. We just wanted to win. And when you have that attitude within, then great things can be accomplished. But when individualism surpasses what group objectives are going to be, that's not the makings for great things to happen. And because Miami at one time, when I joined the team in 1970, was the worst team in all of professional football, the very worst. And so I feel very honored to be a part of what was accomplished totally during that period of time, including the uh, magnificent feat of an undefeated season, because I know that it took a tremendous amount of sacrifice. It took a tremendous amount of commitment. It took a tremendous amount of dedication and the desire to be the best. But it only happened because we had the rosters at that time were 40 players. We had 40 men who were willing to pull together, 40 men who were willing to trust one another, 40 men who were willing to not do anything that would be detrimental uh, to the football team or to our efforts, to our families, to the community of Miami, that we had 40 really good people. Now. I don't want to become political, and maybe I shouldn't even go here, but the thing that bothers me a little bit, not a little bit, that concerns me about the course that we're going today, and I won't go too far into this, on the federal level is that we have divisions to some degree 
within our government we have issues to be solved but it's only be on certain people's terms and i don't know whether we can get where we want to get to because no one's willing to make the sacrifice for america for the team the team is most important thing so someone's going to have to make a sacrifice here or there but finally we get together and we get where we want to go that's my experience in athletics and in athletics whether it's junior high school excuse me whether it's grammar school where i played at first street elementary school my very first experiences that was the theme that our coach told us and we had great success we were the city champions we were undefeated and the best part of all they gave us a banquet it's not a banquet it was a luncheon and i still remember it i still recall it very vividly because for the luncheon just the members of the football team we got hot dogs and coca-cola and it was absolutely great <laughs> so good things can happen and great things happen when people are together when people don't really care about selflessness individuals to a certain extent self-interest above everything else but they pull together to work for one common goal and that's the way you get where you want to go great question there Driftwood, and i really appreciated the uh, the research that you did and uh, obviously seeing the video interview and all that so uh, thank you driftwood let's go to new jersey Parlor, new jersey samso what advice can you give young people about how to become a professional football player? Say it again, much louder, shout it. What advice can you give young people about how to become a professional football player? What advice can you give to young people about how to get to the professional level? Well, you know, it's that's really a that's really a tough question, <laughs> but I I will attempt to answer uh, uh, the advice that I can give to people. Uh, certainly, I had a lot of self doubt uh, along the way, but again, I had great great support systems, and beginning with my entry uh, into uh, elementary sports and football. Uh, all the way along the line. Uh, there were periods of times individually where things did not necessarily work out well for me. I can remember experiences in another sport, track and field. In my very first uh, competition, once I uh, matriculated to the high school level, uh, I went to a relay in a neighboring state and I did not do very well and I was so disappointed and so frustrated. Uh, but the one thing that I made up my mind that I was not going to quit. And so perseverance, uh, determination to go back and examine uh, what you want to achieve and how you're going to get there and to work harder at it, to be more committed, uh, often is a part of that challenge. Uh, as I was explaining to the audiences before uh, you came here today, uh, things are not always going to be smooth. Things are not always going to be easy, but that is to test and perhaps test the metal of the individual in terms of how bad he or she wants to obtain, obtain that objective that they are seeking to reach, whether it's athletics or whether it's whatever endeavor that you decide that you want to be. You, if you have the basic attributes to get to where you want to get to, then you must have the resolve. Uh, you must have the determination. You must have the work ethic. You must have uh, the continuing desire to reach that goal because along the way there may be obstacles here and there. And if you do not have the metal to surmount or get around those obstacles one way or another, then the future may not be bright, but understand that it's not always going to be easy and smooth sailing. It is a part of one's desire to get to where he or she want to, wants to get or go uh, if they have the ability to look adversity in the face and get there. 
in an athletic context i would explain it this quickly the recent champion of the national football league just this earlier this month the baltimore ravens faced adversity during the course of this football season and yet they were able to overcome adversity stay competitive get to the final round and then ultimately win a championship that is a real testament i can make the same case for the miami dolphins during the undefeated season and getting to the super bowl many many years ago 40 years ago during the course of that season in the fourth game of the year we lost our quarterback and how often do you hear announcers and today talk about the importance of the quarterback as if he's the one component that will help create winning as opposed to losing while that has some degree of truthfulness it is not entirely truthful because you need 11 players to win and so when our quarterback went down with a dislocated ankle and missed most of that year we had our second team quarterback who was prepared and ready to assume the mantle and he kept us winning so i think it is the components of the team totally and the individuals who have themselves ready have themselves prepared and are ready to assume the challenges and sometimes it's not going to be the easy. conference is about to end but we have to persevere and if we persevere good things happen don't worry that wasn't for us we're, we're good to go so uh thank you uh, uh thank you the, with the question there sam so let's go back to cathedral i think we got a time for about one more question from each group we got about 10 minutes And Paul, your microphone is muted. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, you said using a football game? Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, the question that was directed to me uh, is about losing a football game the feelings that one might have afterward, uh, uh, after the event has uh, taken place, going home, or just the general feeling. Uh, uh, personally speaking, um, uh, there's a lot of soul searching, uh, as far as I was concerned, and, and a lot of self-examination, as far as I was concerned. What could I have done more? Uh, what could I have done better? Or if, I, if an error had occurred on my part, why didn't I, you know, do better at the time? Uh, so looking at it from a standpoint of my contribution, but then as a t team concept, uh, certainly everyone's disappointed because a lot of preparation goes into football game is like taking an examination for you, for you in school here. And you rehearse, you rehearse, you rehearse up to examination time. And if you weren't successful, you're trying to figure out why you were not successful. Uh, all of the answers may not be in at that particular moment right after a ball game. Uh, in the world of sport and in that we're talking about football, usually the examination even goes forward another day uh, to an analysis once you're with your teammates and, and coaching staff when you review the video that has been taken of that game to really scrutinize where errors occurred if they occurred that contributed to uh, a loss. And what I always tried to do was examine those things a day or so afterwards to validate where I had fallen down and where our team had fallen down because then in the given situation, the next time we would make sure that we did not make the same mistake again or what you would call self-inflicted wounds or if you're talking about tennis, 
a tennis tournament, unforced errors, but try to be more disciplined, try to be, uh, make sure that you were able to complete the task as you were taught or fundamentally uh, you learn to do. And so usually if one is fundamentally sound, if he is prepared, if he understands what his uh, assignment is, uh, and if he is motivated to get it done, and if he wants to do it the right way, generally speaking, he is going to make a con uh, successful contribution. And if everyone else is on board with that same concept in team play, then the team and the organization will be successful in going forward. But in answering the question, it doesn't feel very good, but you can correct whatever mistakes that you have made and then so the next time that you leave that contest or sport with a better feeling. Thank you very much, Cathedral. And let's go to uh, Hollywood Hills, Florida. Driftwood, go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> okay. How do you think your middle school years helped to shape and develop you as both a professional and a, and a man? Uh, well, uh, how do I shape the um, school years help shape me as a professional and a man? And again, I go back to the things that the foundation that was laid for me, uh, which I spoke about a little bit earlier, which I identified, first of all, in my home, what was taught to me in my home. I had responsibilities, as I said, although my sister probably, sisters probably had more responsibilities than I have since I was the youngest, but nevertheless, I had responsibilities. I had expectations of... Uh, what I was to be when I left that home and went outside to the world. And, and so um, I understood what my father and my mother had taught me about uh, the things that we talked about, uh, certainly integrity, we talked about respect. Uh, I wanted to kind of live up to those things because my mother and my father were those things and they were my the people that I idolized. As my world began to grow and I looked outside of the home and I mentioned earlier in this talk about other athletes who had made a vital impact not only with their performances but what they did as citizens in the community. The pressures that were placed on uh, Jack Robinson who was the first African American to play in Major League Baseball were enormous. He had to be more than just a baseball player, which he was a great baseball player, but as a citizen, what the expectations were for him. So many people expected him to fail. And if he had have failed, what the repercussions would have been for African Americans in that sport. Or Jesse Owens, who internationally is acclaimed and was acclaimed as an athlete of the century, but beyond that, what he represented and meant off of the field. Or, or Paul Robinson, also internationally known, and, uh, 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 and, and, a, and a guy who was just unbelievable. So I think that, you know, yes, we're talking about athletics and we're talking about football, but we're talking about character in terms of what it means uh, to even be beyond that. And so coming out to share my experiences with you young people here today, hopefully, you know, you can tie into some of the things that I'm saying that what my expenses were for me to help me along different stages, uh, certainly scholastically um, through the university and then on to uh, my experiences in the business world, uh, which have been uh, in, in, in professional athletics, again, as an administrator in doing the things that I need to do, uh, the lessons that I learned from many, many years ago are applied to that. Uh, when I have been involved in any aspect uh, of decision making, to be fair, to be honest, uh, to be uh, to make a decision that's in the best interest of the organization, not necessarily my best interest, but if uh, if I'm working in the best interest of the organization, my interests are going to be be well served. So uh, I think all of these lessons have been vital. I've been very fortunate to have great mentors. Uh, who have reached out to me uh, as I was coming along, just as you will have great mentors who are reaching out and providing you with a, a, a pathway to hopefully make you successful. And I hope that all of you will be successful because I think that within all of us, you know, we can reach our goals if we decide to take the proper path. 
And thank you, Hollywood Hills. Let's go with the uh, last question from Palmer, New Jersey at Samso, and then ask Mr. Uh, Warfield with his closing remarks after that, and we'll conclude the program. What are some things I should begin working on if I want to one day become a Hall of Fame player? <laughs> well, um, you know, the Hall of Fame is the uh, it is a great, great, great honor, <clears throat> and um, uh, uh, Mr. Saki was indicating out of the number of people who played uh, professional sport in this instance, is fo in this instance, football. How many occupy a spot in Canton, Ohio, where uh, a bust of my likeness has been erected in a special area to signify that uh, I was one of the premier players in the history of the sport? Uh, that's enormous. Uh, that is mind-boggling. Uh, when I started playing, as I indicated years ago, my first exposure, I didn't think I was good enough to do that. And as I began to play, uh, there have been great, great, great names who are in that rotunda in Canton, Ohio, that I now am privileged to have a spot, that I never assumed that I would be there. What I attempted to do was basically the lessons that I learned that we're talking about right now. Uh, I intended, I attempted to, uh, to work hard. Uh, I attempted to persevere. I attempted to, you know, show some leadership, if not being very vocal, at least the leadership by example of doing things the right way. I believed in all those concepts that we've talked about, hard work, dedication, fair play, uh, uh, keeping oneself self fit, uh, 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 not usage of alcohol or tobacco or any of those things because I, I believed that and I wanted to be as good as I could possibly be. That was my objective. Every time that I took the field of play to do all of the things in preparation to that time to give a winning performance for my team and to help my team win a ball game. Nothing would stand in the way of that and doing it the right way because sportsmanship is so much a part of it. Values are so much a part of it. I wanted to win, but I wanted to win the right way. And then I could, after winning, I could pause and reflect I did it the right way. Simply being the best that I could be for myself and for my team was what my objective was. Now, I was very, very fortunate. After it was all said and done, those who are responsible for looking at people who are to be nominated for selection into a Hall of Fame thought that my contribution as an athlete in the National Football League merited my being placed along names such as Jim Thorpe. And I would explore all of you to read about Jim Thorpe or who is in the Hall of Fame in, in, in Canton, Ohio, uh, a man of Native American descent who reached the top, uh, or to Otto Graham. <laughs> These are all names that you don't know about, but names that I'm familiar with. What I'm saying, for, saying is that the Pro Football Hall of Fame is something that I never necessarily aspired to be. I didn't say I wanted to be in the Hall of Fame when I started playing. I simply said I want to do the best job that I can do every Sunday afternoon and feel good about it coming off the field that I had made a major contribution to my team's ability to win. And after it was all said and done, there were those who said, who paid me the extreme honor that you belong in this very special place where we recognize the best players to have ever played the football game. I'm enormously honored. I'm enormously proud. Uh, that wasn't what I was shooting for, but 
that's the goal that can happen for many of you if you apply and work towards a goal and that would be my message to you here today based on all of the values that we have talked about in terms of character and being a good person and and you can reach those goals too so with that i would say it's been a pleasure for me to be with you this morning i wish all of you you know the best of luck in pursuing whatever endeavor that you want to go into it doesn't necessarily have to be athletics but to apply yourself to find out who are the people like i've looked for those people in jesse owens ralph bunch or jack robinson what they did how they did it to get to where they wanted to i wanted to be like them and they were the positive role models for this society it worked for them and i think it's worked for me but more importantly it can work for each and every one of you so thank you so much for being a part of this And Mr. Warfield, on behalf of the Hall of Fame and uh, those that were, we're, first of all, I can say we're proud and honored to have great members like Mr. Paul Warfield enshrined here at the Hall of Fame. They make our jobs fun and, and easy and uh, and uh, just uh, a joy to work here. So um, thank you to Mr. Warfield. Thank you to the schools that tuned in. Thank you to Cathedral City High School and Terraces, ETEC, all the folks that helped make this possible. Thank you very much. Took a team, and this concludes our program. Take care. <laughs>